Hello, my name is Vladimir Foltin. I'm PCM, ATM expert in EASA Certification Directorate. Today, I will be presenting to you two innovative concepts, iConspicuity and Uspace Airspace, and how these two can make European skies safer for rotocraft and general aviation. First, let, let's have a look at the safety data. We have conducted an analysis of safety data, co concretely fatal accidents, which happened in EASA member states over 11 years. While number of accidents is stable, worryingly, number of fatalities is growing. When looking at the safety data more closely, we have identified that all happened to uncontrolled aircraft and all aircraft involved were smaller aircraft, many of them being rotocraft. This has driven our work on solution and identification of problems. When looking at the safety data, we, we have identified four problem areas. These were ineffective sharing of traffic information, mostly because of incompatible methods how traffic information is shared across the system. The second is congestion of uncontrolled traffic, which typically takes place either in the vicinity of aerodromes or along the boundaries of controlled airspace. Increasing drought operations is the third problem area. And the fourth problem area is airspace inefficiencies, which are embedded in the current criteria. So how to solve these problems? We think the best would be to look at the airspace design and its use. But not only that. We propose solution for eye conspicuity. In short, that's in-flight electronic conspicuity plus. But to tackle these problems with two solutions in isolation would not be good. So we really believe the key solution is the combination of the two. Of course, we shall not forget about ongoing developments on new space and we need to ensure that these are completely compatible with what we are trying to propose. Let me introduce these new concepts in more detail. Eye conspicuity. When it, we talk about eye conspicuity, we mean in-flight capability of aircraft to receive and transmit traffic, airspace and weather information in real time with the objective to enhance pilot situational awareness. In terms of airspace, we want that traffic congestion and airspace complexity are systematically recognized as a safety relevant factors in airspace design. Last but not least, U-Space will introduce new services and specific procedures. But most importantly, this will be done without segregation of traffic. And this is what we should build on. As a result, we have introduced new tasks in European Plan for Aviation Safety. These are focusing on either eye conspicuity or airspace. Without going into details of these tasks, I would like to highlight just one. Rulemaking Task 0230, which is take clink use space development. In high-level roadmap for eye conspicuity for rotocraft and general aviation, we are proposing to tackle these uh, problems in two steps. First, we would like to focus on use space airspace to propose solution for manned aircraft, uh, how they can become electronically conspicuous to use space service providers. And then after, we would like to build on these solutions to tackle conspicuity problem more generally with the objective to enhance existing flight information service. Our current efforts are focusing on step one. So let's talk about the first the timeline for this step one. We are very busy today with delivering on step one, which is to provide uh, proposals for acceptable means of compliance to SERA 6005 Charlie. The deadlines are tight. The final proposal needs to be ready 
uh, by the end of the year, despite the regulation was published just in April 2021. We have conducted many activities, as you can see, and the stakeholder consultation is taking place these days. Soon after we started working on this acceptable means of compliance, we have realized that we have to look at them from three angles. The first one is from the aircraft perspective. And we have to consider many factors, which you can see on the screen. I will just highlight one of them. Single device policy. We have decided that single device, single method should be enough to make aircraft conspicuous in use by airspace. The second perspective is from USSP perspective. They require a minimum position information and they can rely on this position information being captured by themselves or to, capture it, to be captured by third parties. And we, of course, need to understand what are the minimum performance requirements for these devices and systems uh, to meet the objective of use space airspace. Last but not least, there are resources we could use to make it happen. And of course, the most important one is that this can happen in pan-European scale. So there is no fragment, fragmentation in use space requirements towards aircrew. Considering all these constraints and boundaries, we have, to, we have had one uh, very important uh, condition. All these need to be suitable for low-level and urban environments. So what we are proposing? We believe interoperability could be achieved via ADS-B Lite. I will speak about ADS-B Lite a little bit more in detail later, but let me first introduce you the overall concept. First of all, we would like to rely on a certified ADSB out uh, solution, which is already in the, uh, installed in many aircraft. There are procedures and standards available and well functioning. This will be one of the means of compliance to SERA 6005 Charlie. The second is ISM band. And we know there are many systems out there which are not necessarily compatible. What we are proposing is to adapt these devices to be able to transmit and or broadcast position of aircraft using ADS-B Lite specification that will be voluntarily adopted by the manufacturers of, the, of these devices. The result will be that their customers will be electronically conspicuous to use space airspace. The last, but not least, is mobile telephony. It's a promising technology, as I've mentioned earlier, and we would like to offer it, if possible, to other airspace users not necessarily equipped today, so that they can uh, become conspicuous to use space service providers using, all, again, this new ADS-B light specification. For that purpose, we have conducted conducted a feasibility study, which has revealed certain constraints, which, however, could be overcome. Technologically, the technology is ready to be used for this specific purpose. So let's talk about ADS-B Lite a little bit in more detail. This is a key element of our strategy. This is the specification which will ensure interoperability between various systems, both in the air and on the ground. In essence, it is absolute minimum position information standard that is required for this specific functionality, which is to make manned aircraft, rotorcraft, being electronically conspicuous to use space service providers. It has been developed as a subset of information uh, derived from ADSB out standard, international standard. And therefore, ADSB out standard as certified is fully compatible with ADSB Lite. When talking about the scope, 
the ADSB Lite focuses on message generation function, which uh, builds on three inputs, one of them being optional. First, it's a sensor data. We will propose reliance on GNSS. The second one is configuration control, which is mostly for entering the parameters about the aircraft prior to the flight. And the third one is optional, uh, built on pilot in-command inputs, for example, to indicate emergency status. The ADS-B Lite is not covering the transmission function, which is going to be uh, three options initially we are proposing from the previous slide and uh, possibly other options in the future. The other characteristics of ADS-B Lites are there will be a minimum transmission rate defined for position and velocities and other parameters. There will be a requirement for minimum error control. And of course, timestamp will be required too. In order to be sure that our proposals are feasible, we have conducted many activities. Just two of them are highlighted on this slide. First, we have commissioned feasibility study to evaluate whether mobile telephony technology could be a solution for the rule. And the second one, we have organized workshop with space service providers, candidates in Europe, to validate their plans against our strategy and proposal for ADSB Lite. So in summary, we are proposing three options. First, ADSB out certified relies on ICAO standard standards. It's already available and installed in many aircraft and all elements are in place to make it a success in this case. The second one is ISM band. There are many devices out there. There was a lot of investment by airspace users who already voluntarily equipped their aircraft to use these devices. So it's user's choice. So we want to build on this uh, past investments and users' preference and to propose this solution for, CERA 6, for compliance with CERA 6005 Charlie. Additionally, this will only require affordable infrastructure uh, for USSPs. So it's not going to be very expensive for them. The third option, pending further actions, as identified in the mobile telephony feasibility study, we would like to propose mobile telephony, which will build on existing infrastructure and uh, will be affordable to new airspace users. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to meet and discuss these points with you in the future.